Merry Christmas, everybody. We're here to celebrate the name of Jesus today. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's good to us, isn't he? Amen. What did you say was the baby's name? His name is Jesus. What did you say was the baby's name? His name is Jesus. What did you say was the baby's name? His name is Jesus. King Jesus was that precious baby's name. Who was the baby born in Bethlehem? His name. His name is Jesus. Oh, who was the baby born in Bethlehem? His name is Jesus. Who was the baby born in Bethlehem? His name is Jesus. King Jesus was that precious baby's name. Who do the shepherds and the wise men seek? His name is Jesus. Who do the shepherds and the wise men seek? His name is Jesus. Who do the shepherds and the wise men seek? His name is Jesus. King Jesus was that precious baby's name. And who did they find lying neath the star? His name. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Who did they find lying neath the star? His name is Jesus. Who did they find lying neath the star? His name is Jesus. King Jesus was that precious baby's name. Oh, tell me his name. His name is Jesus. I love that name. His name is Jesus. King Jesus was that precious name. His name. Oh, tell me his name. His name is Jesus. I love that name. His name is Jesus. King Jesus was that precious baby's name. Here's who he is. Thank the Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. King Jesus was that precious baby's name Hallelujah. kings and kingdoms will all pass away but his name will live forever his name will live forever jesus was that precious baby's name
Father, the blessed angel came unto some certain shepherds with tidings of the same that there was born in Bethlehem the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. In Bethlehem, in Bethlehem, a blessed man was born, and laid with him a His mother Mary did nothing take in store. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and Christmas time, and because of sickness for many years, he has been unable to be in the house of God. But thank God for modern technology that we can uh, kind of bring him to us. So our dear friend Roger Dodger, Roger Blackburn, uh, I got a video from him this week. I've been missing him singing at Christmas time, and so if you could get the lights for me, Blaine, if you don't care, and uh, maybe even these. Uh, these uh, spotlights up here, whoever's running that up there, if you don't care to get that. And uh, Roger's, he's casual attire, so please forgive him. He's not dressed for church, but that's okay. So uh, whenever you're ready, Ryan Hawk, go ahead and hit that. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Tell everyone you see. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Tell them of Calvary. Have a holly jolly Christmas with all things in control. Have a holly jolly Christmas with Jesus in your soul. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. I've been born again, saved from my sins. That is why I sing. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Tell everyone you see. Have a holly jolly Christmas, tell them of Calvary. Have a holly jolly Christmas, with all things in control. Have a holly jolly Christmas, with Jesus in your soul. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Loretta, whenever you was cooking in the kitchen, I want some of that, okay? <laughs> but thank the Lord. It's, it's so, uh, we wanted to have him a part of this year's Christmas special and uh, Christmas service. And just couldn't be Christmas without Roger singing the Holly Jolly Christmas. Greg, come and sing a powerful song talking about the heartbeat of Jesus Christ. How the heartbeat was heard from the cradle to the cross. Come on, Greg. She traveled many miles She was going to have a child She knew that life would never be the same And as she laid that precious child In a manger all the while Crying out, Jesus is his name Then Everyone around began to say, Listen to his heartbeat, such 
such a special heartbeat Sounds like none I've ever heard At any other time Listen to his heartbeat Such a different heartbeat His every beat just seems to be The hope of all mankind He grew to be a man and with words of life began Walking shores of Galilee that day Then he cleansed lives of their sin Made the blind to see again The lame would walk and the dumb would talk And everyone would say Listen to his heart such a special heartbeat Sounds like none I've ever heard At any other time Listen to his heartbeat Such a different heartbeat His every beat just seems to be The hope of all mankind Then they led him up a hill the earth grew dark and still As they nailed him to that cruel tree Then his blood came streaming down Down to the thirsty ground And the world was hushed at its final beat Then they laid him in a tomb all their lives were cast in ruins In their hearts crying bitter tears Oh, but everything had changed That storm was rolled away And someone said, what is that? Special heartbeat is the one I've only heard just one other time. Listen to his heartbeat, such a different heartbeat. His every beat just has to be the whole. Yes, it's the hope of all problem with all of that, it ended too quick. Great job, all of you today. Absolutely wonderful. Welcome to our Christmas worship service, our annual Christmas worship service. We're glad to see some folks back with us that have been out uh, with this virus. It just comes and goes, doesn't it? And we are glad, though, that those of you that have been under the weather that are feeling better now, back in church, it's good to have you back, especially on today. And this is a great day as we come together to celebrate the fact that Jesus was not only born, but he was born to die. And he not only died, but he rose again and he's coming back. And we have the promise of his word that he'll save those that call upon his name. Uh, I, I seldom bring my phone to the pulpit with me, but I just wanted to make sure that I had all of the numbers right uh, the Christmas cave on this weekend had 10,003 visitors. Isn't that great? That made a total of 36,417. 
that have passed through the Christmas cave. And the greatest news of all uh, is on one night, three prayed to be saved. Isn't that great? This weekend. And uh, one of the schools they mentioned came Friday and five other local groups, they had 541 from schools. Uh, Some fourth graders were in and, and gave Bibles to those that wanted Bibles and God bless them and we're so thankful for that. The Lord has done great things through that and others, others who it's just unbelievable, some that were there that you would not expect to be at a place like that and they got to hear the gospel message and we are so thankful. Uh, before I get into the, uh, the sermon today as well, uh, I want to mention that today's message will be just a little different, but I hope you'll be patient with me. Not that I'm going to need a lot of time, but uh, just to clarify uh, what, why I'm sharing what I'm sharing. And we'll have to wait till the end to get to the high note. I never like to let people leave down, but I think that when we look at it together, God will, God will show himself to be who he always is, mighty, to help us in our time of need. And I want you to turn today to John chapter 15, John chapter 15. So far in this series, I've preached on the wow of Christmas, the wonder of Christmas, the worship of Christmas. Then Wednesday night, I preached on the word of Christmas. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And today, I'm preaching on the subject without Christmas. What would the world be like without Christmas? I went back and read an article from, it was November the 30th, a few years ago, when ABC was the first, I believe, to release a report. And the headlines were simply this, Christmas has been canceled in Bethlehem. I copied a few excerpts from that and the news story reported was this, city officials have called off plans for an elaborate celebration because of Israeli travel restrictions and ongoing violence. There's even a debate on whether the giant Christmas tree usually brought in from Norway as the centerpiece of the manger square will be decorated or left bare. The town of Jesus' birth will be dark and deserted this Christmas without festive street lights, craft fairs, and choirs in the manger square following a calling off of all the ambitious plans for Christmas this year. Festive street lights still hanging from last year's celebration when thousands of visitors crowded manger square will remain unlit. Musical concerts have been called off and the Christmas craft fair will not go ahead as planned. Manger Square by this time should have been filled with thousands of tourists, guests, and guides, but it's now empty. No Christmas is bad business. Well, I've got news for them. It's more than bad business, it's bad news. Some people, they want to cancel Christmas. I mean, they would love that this holiday didn't even exist. I said Merry Christmas to someone this week and they said, you don't have to shop here if you're gonna say that. So I'll do what they ask. I won't shop there anymore. I mean, I didn't say it to offend them, but you're, you're pretty sensitive if you can't take a Merry Christmas. Oh, maybe I should just say bah humbug. Some people though would love to cancel Christmas. Some people, it's not that they wanna cancel Christmas, but they're sure confused about Christmas. I read the account of someone that watched a lady, uh, you you could tell she had about a four year old child and, and she was hectic trying to get all of her Christmas shopping done and she was rushing through with the child and And somehow, with all the packages and everything she was doing, she lost track of her child. Frantically, she began to search, and finally, she found that little three or four-year-old staring at a nativity scene. And there, looking at the nativity scene, she began to scold him. But instead, with glee and joy, he said, Look, Mommy, look, Mommy, it's baby Jesus in the hay. And she responded, We don't have time for that. 
How do people not find time for Christ at Christmas? But it's true. People by the millions, by the millions will have no problem doing everything else, but they cannot spend time with Christ at Christmas. Two middle-aged friends had been going on a shopping spree and they were out on this shopping spree and they drove by a church and some of the people of the church were out putting the finishing touches on the church nativity and they had a big sign out front inviting the entire community to their Christmas Eve service. One of the ladies looked over at her other friend and said, why do they have to put religion in everything? These churches and Christians are ruining Christmas for us. We've lost the meaning of Christmas. It's bad to cancel Christmas. It's bad to be confused about Christmas. But can you imagine a world that never knew anything about Christmas? Some people say, why do you celebrate Christmas? Well, it's because of the things that we have gained from Christmas. Jesus put it best in John 15 and verse 22 when he penned these words, he said, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not not sinned. But now they have no cloak for their sin. I'm focusing on the gospel of John. I started on the first chapter on Wednesday night and tonight I'm gonna make, or this morning rather, I'm gonna make reference a lot to the 14th chapter and 15th chapter of John because I think really the Lord paints a picture about what we would be missing had the word not come to this world and been made flesh. What would happen if we didn't have Christmas? What would the world be like without Christmas? Well, without Christmas, first of all, the Father would be unknowable. You could never have a relationship with the Heavenly Father if it wasn't for Christmas. And you say, preacher, where do you get that? Well, Jesus put it this way. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life in John 14. And then he said this, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. He went on to say, if you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long with you and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. And believe me for the very works sake. Do you know what he was saying? You have no access to the heavenly Father without Jesus Christ. Had there not been a Christmas, had there not been the coming of Christ, then the greatest craving in the depths of every human being's soul could never have been satisfied because all humanity has ever wanted to know is God. I don't care where you go today. You can go to the deepest, darkest jungles in this world and find people that have never heard anything about Jesus and they'll be trying to worship a God some way. It may be in something in nature. It may be a false idol, but they'll be trying to worship a God somehow. They haven't yet heard the gospel message, but there's something inside of us that we want to know God and there's no way that we can know God without Jesus Christ. But just coming to the place of saying, preacher, why is Jesus so important to knowing God? Because believing in God is not knowing God. A lot of people say, oh, I believe there's a God. That won't save you. You've got to come through Christ to know the heavenly father and to know that you're right with him. So first of all, the Father would be unknowable. Second of all, the gospel would be unpreachable. Why? I would have nothing to preach. 
when the angel said, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, the word good tidings means good news. And the word gospel literally means good news. Do you know what he was saying? He said, Behold, I bring you the gospel. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Without Jesus coming to this world and being born, can you imagine with no Christ, there's no Christmas. And with no Christ, there's not only no Christmas, but there's no gospel to preach. Because the gospel is the gospel of Jesus Christ. No gospel means no angels, no star, no manger, no shepherds. No wise men, no babe in swaddling clothes. No Christmas means no lights, no carols, no decorations, no trees, no children's programs, no musicals. Without Christmas, no miracles, no parables, no signs of his second coming, no hope. Without Christmas, no virgin birth, No virtuous life, no vicarious death, no victorious resurrection, no visible return without Christmas. No Christmas, no gospel. With no gospel, there's no churches. With no churches, there's no preachers, no deacons, no teachers, no singers, no Sunday school classes. Without Christmas, there is no mission work. There is no good deeds done in the name of Christ without Christmas. Without Christmas, there is no doctrine. Why? Because there is no New Testament that we can present to people. The Bible wouldn't have had 66 books. It would have ended in the book of Malachi with the possibility of a curse to all with no hope. But because of Christmas, everything changed. There would be no need to go out and reach the world and tell the loss of Jesus Christ. No salvation. There would be no sanctification. No glorification. There would be nothing to stand here and tell you about today. We would just be a group of people gathering without a cause. But hallelujah, we've got a cause because we have a gospel. And the gospel is to be preached to all people everywhere that they can be saved. No curse could ever be removed with no gospel. No gospel, no heaven. No gospel, no everlasting life. No forgiveness, no peace, no light, no promise, no joy without the gospel. I wonder what kind of Christmas people are going to have this year when they leave Christ out of it. Because without Christ, there is no Christmas. And without Christmas, there is no gospel. So we find the Father would be unknowable. The gospel would be unpreachable. And not only that, prayer would be unprofitable. Why? Why? Jesus said, whatsoever things you ask in my name. Whose name? Jesus' name. Whatsoever things you ask in my name. He said, I will do it that the Father may be glorified. We don't pray in anybody else's name. We pray in Jesus' name. Because he brings back the fact he is the key to link us back to heaven. All of our prayers, we pray every one of them will be in vain if Christ did not come. But he come to not only help us know the Father, but to have communication with the Father. They're just words if they're not prayed in his name. It's like having a check that's made out to you for a large sum of money, but no signature on the check. No bank is going to sign, take that check that's unsigned and cash it and give you what you want. How do you expect to get your prayers answered if you don't sign it in Jesus' name? 
My name will get nowhere when I pray. Your name will get you nowhere when you pray. But by the way, you can ask anything in Jesus' name. When we come to that place that we know that our loved ones have needs, we can seek God and pray for them. And as we pray for them, we know that there is power to answer those prayers because we ask it in Jesus' name. We have access to the Father because of Christmas. Without Christmas, the Father's unknowable. Without Christmas, the gospel's unpreachable. Without Christmas, prayers are unprofitable. And without Christmas, heaven is unattainable. Had he not come, to where we are, we couldn't get to where he is. It takes it all. See, he came and taught us that not only through his name are our prayers answered, but it also teaches us in the word of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And then Paul went on to say, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. There's no other way to be saved without Jesus. I couldn't imagine preaching funerals without the gospel. People ask me constantly, what do you do? What do you do at a funeral when somebody, as far as you know, they die without a testimony and they leave no evidence that they are right with God and you have to preach their funeral? What do you preach? The gospel. You preach to the living. We can't change those that have died. But because of the gospel, we can have everlasting life. Because of the gospel, heaven is attainable. Because the same Jesus that came lived a sinless sinless life. The perfect Lamb of God that became the sacrifice for our sins, to die for our sins. And because he came and bled and died and rose from the grave, now when we pray, we know that he ever liveth to make intercession for us. He'll hear our prayers and answer our cry. And because of his coming, we can now have salvation and know that heaven is ours. I saw something a few days ago at a funeral that I hadn't seen in this church before. I preach a lot of funerals. It's not that I'm proud of that. It's just you get old enough, you preach a lot of funerals. And I preach a lot of funerals and attend a lot of funerals and and everyone else had pretty much gone. For those of you that have been here, it's not uncommon Uh, with many of the funerals in our area, the local directors at the end, they have a final view, they call it, or pass by. And that's the time when the congregation passes by the casket to pay their respects the final time. Then after everybody else leaves, always the last to go up is the family. This particular funeral, I did as I always do. I came down off the pulpit and was standing at the head of the casket and all of the church and friends and family, the family that wasn't the immediate family had already passed by, cousins, great aunts, great uncles, just the immediate family left. And the dear lady was standing in front of the casket looking at her loved one and her family was around her and she broke out in prayer. when she broke out in prayer. She said, our only desire is to see our family go to heaven with us. Even today, may the Spirit of God touch their heart. Oh God, she said, you think she'd be saying, I can't bear the thought of going on without my loved one. But she said, oh God, I can't bear the thought in this life of us being together again one day, but our family not being with us. She brought her family and died and said, please God, save my family. Could you pray that at the casket of your loved one? Several minutes passed and they were getting ready to 
They'd already sent the pallbearers out. They were getting ready to move the casket. And, and I, I tapped the director on the shoulder. I said, we may need to wait just a few moments. There was some of the family members right here on this altar at the head of that casket seeking the Lord. Not because their loved one had died, but because Jesus has risen. In the hour of death, you can find life. Families, during this time, many of you are going to face your first Christmas without your loved ones. May I reassure you that they may be out of your sight this morning and you may not be able to have them around your table this year. But can I assure you, for those of your loved ones that have gone on, I just can't imagine what Christmas in heaven's like. I can't imagine what it's like when the angels say, remember, remember that day when he laid down his royal robe and became a baby born in, in Bethlehem. Do you remember that day when angels gathered together and hovered over that area and the message came to the shepherds and the shepherds came and worshiped him? Do you remember that day? Is there anybody here that's glad you're going to heaven because Jesus came as a baby? Died as a man on the cross, rose King of kings and Lord of lords. Heaven is attainable because of Christ. So, we get to have Christmas. And because we get to have Christmas, I know the Father. Because we get to have Christmas, the gospel I preach is powerful enough to save anybody that will come. Because of Christmas, I know that my prayers are gonna be answered. You say, I've prayed in his name and nothing's happened. Not yet. Because of Christmas, I get to go to heaven. The world may still have Christmas, I guess my question is really a little more personal this morning. Will you go through this holiday without Christmas? It's more than the gatherings. It's more than the food. It's more than the gifts. It is the Savior. Your heads are bowed for just a moment. Get ready to sing. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm just going to ask you if you have any kind of a need whatsoever today because of Christmas. You can come and you can pray and pray in his name and not only pray in his name but the same glory of God that was there on the hills of Judea is the same glory of God that's right where you are. Now, you can't see God. God is a spirit. But Jesus came so that we could behold his glory. In my body, I can't see God. No man has seen God at any time. Our bodies wouldn't allow us to look on the Lord. His glory is too great. But because of Jesus, glory could be handled. Glory could be held. Glory could create worship. If you need saved, if you ask in Jesus' name for forgiveness, you can be saved. If you have personal needs, if you ask in Jesus' name, he'll give you that. And by the way, if you're just swamped with the busyness of Christmas, take time to come and pray this morning. And you can experience his presence for Christmas. As we stand and as they sing, if you need to pray, the Holy Spirit extends the invitation to you. 
Will you come right now? God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Sure. Hallelujah. In the busy Christmas Glory to God. Story. Hallelujah. All Thank you, the Lord. lights, the bells, the toys. Glory to God. I have found. Thank you, Lord. You are the Praise only God. source Praise God. of comfort Thank and you, Lord. joy. Glory to God. Lord, I want your presence for Christmas. I want your presence for Christmas. I long to your spirit speaking peace to my heart of all the gifts I may receive there's only one I really need and it's your And the year is fresh and new. What will linger are the moments spent, my Lord, just worshiping you. Lord, I want your presence for Christmas. I want your
softly if there's someone that hasn't come forward that's lost this morning. Will you raise your hand and say, Preacher, church family, pray for me that I'll receive the greatest gift this world has ever known. The gift of salvation. Before it's too late, I'm lost. I need prayer. Will not come to you nor embarrass you. If you'll raise your hand, I'll recognize you lifted your hand and you can take it right back down, but we'll pray for you. All over the sanctuary, is there anybody this morning that would just raise your hand and say, we need prayer. Please pray for us. Please pray for us. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. You can be seated this morning. A few things I need to tell you about that's not in the bulletin that I want to share with you. Uh, we thank God for his presence, his power. Great place to be today, isn't it? Glory to God. I have a friend here from South Point. He said, boy, it's worth the drive to come today. We are so glad for the presence of the Lord. We do have several folks throughout our community that are ill facing Christmas. Let's pray for their healing, that God would give them a Christmas miracle. And then they handed me a note right before service. I'll mention it now. Carly Cogan, it's the granddaughter of Vernon and Debbie Cogan, was diagnosed with leukemia Friday and, uh, in, in the Michigan hospital there. She's only 11 years old. And they say that she'll be in the hospital during Christmas. And they're friends of Randy and Debbie Blevins. They said, please pray. Let's pray for little Carly. Amen. Will you agree together with me in prayer that God will help Carly? And uh, then so many of our folks that are unable to be out, we want them to know that we're praying for them, that God will give them a blessed, blessed Christmas. Uh, I, I want to say one other thing. Several folks have asked about it, and that's the only reason that I'm mentioning it. Uh, we took on, uh, I don't know why, uh, physically it was a little more than what we could handle right now, but still we agreed to do it. Uh, we're in the process of helping fill a semi-load of new toys to go down to Mayfield, Kentucky that will be leaving on Wednesday the 22nd, either Wednesday the night of the 22nd or Thursday morning and uh, we'll be receiving funds for that through outreach. And if you are up around the Ashland area during the day, you can stop at BWC Trucking. That is right on the 650, that's the Hanging Rock exit. When you get off the exit, don't go toward the river, go the opposite direction, and you'll see an enormous trucking company there, and you can drop the packages off there if you want. And uh, their plans are, it's, it's a mammoth task to take on in just four, three or four days, but uh, we believe God can do it, and also we'll be receiving funding. I've, I've communicated with a pastor friend there, uh, and we're going to be helping them out. They're taking on a number of families. One family, I think they took on, had either five or six family members killed uh, from the tornado. And we're going to help them out. Uh, that with the Christmas food basket project, it's a lot right now. But I believe I serve a great big God. Amen. And I believe he can do anything, don't you? And uh, we do thank you, a number of you. Some of our folks that had planned to help out with the food baskets on Wednesday, it's in your bulletin. Uh, they're unable to go now because of other things are in quarantine or they're battling sickness. And if you can help with that to get those together up at Ironton, we'd appreciate it. The information is in your bulletin today. And then, too, there's information about uh, treats. There's treats for everyone today. So feel free to get that uh, when, when you leave today. It's at every door. Kevin, if you'd come, God bless you. Oh, okay. God bless you, my brother. Christmas Eve.